Welcome to iLecture Online and here's a very special application on how to calculate the forces on moving charges. In this case, the moving charges are going to be in a rectangular current loop. Now, it doesn't have to be a rectangular current loop, it could be a circular cur current loop, but just for the sake of the problem, we're going to use a rectangular current loop because it's easier to work with initially. And uh, what will happen then is that this current loop inside a magnetic field will feel a torque, will cause the forces on the wires will cause the uh, magnetic loop to actually be torqued, cause it to rotate around about an axis. So let's read the problem, let's see what we're talking about here. It says, uh, what is the torque on a rectangular current loop of length 2 meters and height 1 meter carrying a current of 10 amps with a 0.8 tesla magnetic field perpendicular to the loop? So let's try to draw that. So I'm going to draw the loop kind of like this, so we, uh, so we can kind of see it from the side. So here's our current loop. It has a length equal to uh, 2 meters and a height, h, equal to 1 meter. And it's uh, situated in such a way that the loop can rotate about these two lines, like a line that's kind of halfway through the loop. So let's say that it has hinges right here and that this loop can actually rotate like this. All right? Now, let's say we have a magnetic field which is directly perpendicular to the loop, going through the loop like this. Okay, so there's a B field, and the magnitude of our B field is equal to 0 0.8 teslas. And let's say that it carries a current. Now, we didn't give you the direction of current, but let's say that it's clockwise around the loop, so the current will go around the loop like this, so I is equal to 10 amps, which means at the top, the current goes this way. On the side, the current goes this way. At the bottom, the current goes in this direction. And then over here, the current goes up. All right, so what are the direction of the forces on all four segments of this wire because of the magnetic field and the current going around the wire? So using our right-hand rule, and let's say that we work on the uh, bottom segment here. So we have a, um, we have a uh, current going in this direction and magnetic field going through the, through the loop like this, which means it goes across the wire like that, which means that we have a, um, a force that's directed straight down like that. All right, so we have a force that is straight down. Okay. Then if we look at the very top of the uh, loop, then uh, we can go ahead and put our hands in this direction. Well, that's kind of hard, but you know, imagine that this, this is perpendicular like this, so that means the current would go in this direction. The B field is in this direction. That means the force is upward. So that means we have a force directly up, like so. And of course, these forces would be opposite one another, kind of cancel each other out, so they would pull the loop up and down at the same time. Looking at this right here, we have the uh, current going straight down and then the B field in this direction means that the, uh, that the force will be out of the board. So I'll draw little dots indicating the force is out of the board. And in the back here of the loop, you can see that if the current is up and the B field is this way, that the magnetic field would be into the board. And I can draw little crosses into the board like that. And force is into the board. So you can see that on all sides, on the top the force is outward, the bottom the force is downward, in the front the force is out, in the back the force is into the board, and so the loop gets pulled in this direction, the loop gets pulled in this direction, and the loop is not going to go anywhere that way. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, what if I were to take this and lay the loop flat? So what happens now when I still have the same magnetic field from left to right, But now I put the loop flat, so the loop is now going to look like this. The rectangular loop, like that. Notice that it can, and I'll put an axis through it, is free to rotate about this central axis, so it can rotate. And let's now see what happens to the loop this time. Now again, I still have a current going around the loop in a clockwise direction, so we have I going this way, we have I in this direction, we have current going this direction and current going in this direction, I. Here's still our B field, and then this is the length and the height of the loop. So this is the length, 
from there to there, and uh, from there to there is the height of the loop. All right. Now, again, using the same technique, uh, what would be the force on this wire right there? And notice that I take my fingers in the direction of the current, and I can see then that the B field is in this direction. So that means that the force is downward. The force is pushing down on the wire, making it, trying to make it rotate in this direction. So let me go ahead and indicate that by saying that's into the board or downward. Eh, maybe, maybe it might be better if I use an indicator like this because it's not really into the board. This is kind of hard to draw, right? But imagine that it's downward. So let me just draw little arrows down. That may be better. So the force is downward on this, on this current carrying wire. All right, now, on the other side, the current is going this way, so down, then, uh, so we're coming this way, so it's going out to your direction, to the camera direction, and then the B field is to the left, that means that there's a force upward on the wire. So here, you have a force pulling the wire upward. Force like this. Now, on this back section right here, now you can see that since this is now laying flat, that the current is in the opposite direction of the magnetic field. In a sense, they're parallel to each other. So the force over here, F, is equal to zero. And on the back side, you can also see since it's laying flat, the current is the same direction as the B field. You can see that this end, the force is equal to zero. Now, notice that we're going to have a torque situation. We have this flat loop where this end of the loop is being pulled upward. This end of the loop is being pushed downward. So we have this force that goes this way, force that goes this way, and that will tend to turn the loop like that, around. So we have a torque. So the torque, by definition, is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance. In other words, the torque, the magnitude of the torque, is the force pushing against the wire times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation, which is this distance right here. So from there to there, this would be the perpendicular distance. And that happens to be half the height of the loop, which is equal to 1 half h. The magnitude of the force, which we learned in the previous video, the magnitude of the force F on a current carrying wire is equal to the current times the length of the wire times the strength of the magnetic field, so ILB. So the torque on, the, on this wire, so it will be up on one side, down on the other side, so it's actually the force times perpendicular distance of the the uh, right wire uh, plus the force times the perpendicular distance on the left wire. Left wire, like so. Okay, and then plugging in the numbers, we have ILB for the force, so this is equal to ILB times the perpendicular distance, which is 1 half h, plus ILB times the perpendicular distance, which is 1 half h. And now you can see that uh, we can add those together. So 1 half h times ILB plus 1 half h times ILB will give us ILBH. Now also notice that L times h L times h is equal to the area of that loop. So this can be written as I times the area of the loop times B. And that is the torque, the magnitude of the torque that is caused by a current carrying loop which is embedded in the magnetic field. Now notice, when the loop is laying flat so that there's no magnetic field lines going through the loop, no, field, no magnetic flux going through the loop, we have a maximum torque of IAB. When the loop is perpendicular to the magnetic field, then you can see that the torque is equal to zero. So what happens if the loop is at an angle? What happens if the loop is angled like this with an angle theta, like so? Well, if we take the angle theta with respect to the horizontal, then of course the torque would be IAB times the cosine of theta. If we take the angle with respect of the normal, so this would be, let's say, the normal to the loop, then of course 
the normal of the loop would be 90 degrees with respect to the B field, and if it begins to tilt, then of course the angle becomes smaller, smaller, smaller. Then we use the sine of the angle theta. So the typical thing that they do is they use this angle right here, the angle theta. They don't use this angle theta there, so when it's tilted and this normal vector is tilted like this, this angle becomes smaller, so the torque can then be written as I A B times the sine of the angle theta. So now, looking back to the problem, if you want to know what the magnitude of the torque is on a current carrying loop inside a magnetic field, we simply multiply the current times the cross-sectional area of the loop times the strength of the B field, and what do we get? So we can say then that the torque is equal to the current, which we said was, where'd it go? I lost my current. 10 amps. There we go. So we have 10 amps times the cross-sectional area, which would be the length times the height, which is 2 meters, times 1 meter, times the strength of the B field, which is 0 0.8 teslas, and when it's laying flat like that, it's the sine of 90 degrees, which is 1. And, let's see, do we need a calculator for that? I don't think so. We have 10 times 2, which is 20, times 0.8, which is 16, so the torque is equal to 16 newton meters. Of course, that's of course the units of torque. Now, do we get that unit correctly? Well, let's write that down, right? So we have, for units, we have amps times meters times meters, which is meters squared, times teslas. And remember that units for teslas is newtons per amp times meters. So this is equal to amps times meters squared times newtons per amp times meters. And notice that amps cancels out, one of the meters cancel out, so you have newton meters, which is the unit for torque. So that's how we figure out the torque. Now, what is the direction of the torque? Well, in this case, since the force is pulled this side up and this side down, this is a counterclockwise direction, so now you have to define whether or not clockwise or counterclockwise is a positive direction. The book typically calls a counterclockwise direction as positive, clockwise direction as negative, so using the direction of the torque, you could say that this is a positive 16 Newton meters if you assume that a counterclockwise motion of that, uh, of that current loop uh, is considered a positive torque. And that's how you figure out the forces and the torques on a current carrying loop inside a magnetic field.